What if Naruto was from an astral clan and had an ancient tailed beast? So, I haven't seen anybody do this in this combo, so it's a somewhat original idea. And I have a feeling you guys will like this, so let's get right into it. Um, when I say astral clan, I mean an ancient clan which rivals the Otsutsukis. These two clans have been fighting each other for millions of years. The Otsutsukis and Astrals have been fighting and being rivals for millions of years. These two clans are known to be the strongest clans in the known universe, as they control multiple planets, actually many planets, even entire galaxies. Long before the story of the hidden villages, even long before Kaguya arrived on Earth, there is a ginormous battle between, I'll only say that name once, Otsutsuki Tarine no Miko, which is apparently Otsutsuki clan head slash king, or rather was the king. Um, he is fighting against the astral clan leader, Kobarama. Don't ask where I got the name from. These guys are like Indra and Ashra, or Madara and Hashirama, just on a planetary scale. These two legends are so strong, every time they fight, they destroy an entire planet. These two have been fighting each other for millennia because of the long lifetimes that are, well, that both clans have. They both have kids. Um, the Tsutsuki child is Kaguya. And the astral child is the prince of the astrals, Naruto. However, the two clan... Well, I, I do need to mention these two are still babies. Both of them. However, the two clan heads have their fiercest battle yet. This was going to be their last battle. And they're going to put all of their power into it. They battle it out with their strong chakra monsters, respectively. The Otsutsuki clan has the 20 tailed beast. Its strength rivals that of 110 tails. This is because every time a clan member goes to another planet to absorb, to absorb its life energy and chakra and to transform it into their own, the Otsutsuki clan uses about 1% of the 20 tailed beast to make a god tree seed and a potential tentacles. The astral clan has the 13 tailed wolf slash panther. It's kind of a mix between the two. This beast is a little bit stronger than the 20 tails because whilst the astrals are incredibly strong, they lack a number and only birth a child every decade or so. Their fight would last 10 and 10 days and 10 nights. They both use all of their power and might and destroy many planets around them, even an entire star. So Naruto and Kaguya are both sent to a planet far away to survive the battle and rebuild their respective clans once they grow up and become the clan heads. Naruto's father, Kobirama, gave Naruto a tenth of the 13 tailed wolf's power, which, mind you, is still a lot. Like, much more powerful than the 10 tails, a lot. Unknown to anybody, Kaguya and Naruto are both accidentally sent to the same planet, Earth. However, Naruto's space, space pod gets stuck in a space base in the universe where time passes incredibly slowly, so that in the end, when Naruto's pod continues its way to Earth and becomes loose from that whirlpool of time space, space time, sorry about that, a thousand Earth years have passed, whilst for Naruto it's only been a, a month or so. When Naruto's space pod lands on Earth, he lands near the hidden leaf village, Konohagakure. 
Hiruzen, the third Hokage, goes to the crash site and looks at the space pod, but all he sees is a child. A baby, to be exact. Well, actually, Naruto is one, of, is one year old, but whatever. Hiruzen picks Naruto up and takes him to the hidden leaf village. On the way, Hiruzen is confronted by a group of Anbu sent by Adanzo to eliminate Hiruzen whilst he's alone out of the village to take the title of Hokage for himself. Hiruzen places Naruto on the ground and prepares for a fight, and stands in a fighting position. However, before the Anbu could attack, everybody focus, everybody's focus shifts to what looks like a wolf. But it's not a normal wolf. It has 13 tails, and its skin looks like that of a panther's. Before anyone could react or do anything to stop it, every single one of the Anbu immediately die. But then, when Hiruzen looks around to look at Naruto, he sees many Anbu falling from trees that were all surrounding the third Akage. If you're wondering how Naruto slash the thirteen-tailed wolf killed all of these people without even flinching, um, this was possible because not only did the tailed wolf release all of its bloodlust, which is more than ten tails has, um, to protect Naruto because the wolf was very good friends with Naruto's father. There were well, Naruto's father was a perfect in Shiriki, so they were really good friends. And because Naruto's father told the wolf to protect his child, the wolf does so. But also, the 13 tailed wolf put every single Anbu that was surrounding the two near a Ganjutsu that amplifies the effects of bloodlust. Yes, the. I'm gonna make the tailed wolf a male in the story. Naruto transforms back into a normal baby. However, however, Naruto's skin is a little paler than in the original canon series. Not at Tsutsuki level pale, but still paler than normal. Hiruzen picks Naruto up again and heads to the leaf village, now even faster before more Anbu arrive to try to fight them. Hiruzen arrives at his house and lays Naruto down, and then lays down himself since it is already pretty late at night, and Hiruzen is pretty tired from all the paperwork he's done today. The next morning, when Hiruzen wakes up and looks at Naruto to see, he is wide awake and staring at Hiruzen. Naruto and Hiruzen stare each other dead in the eyes, and Naruto starts smiling. I've decided, Hiruzen says. I want to adopt you. Naruto starts laughing a little bit, and tries to say something, but all that comes out is, ba ba. So just, just don't question it. Hiruzen starts smiling as well, and adopts Naruto, but he does this in secret, as he doesn't want to raise suspicion. And he's not going to tell Naruto that he's adopted for a while. We cut to when Naruto is about four and a half. Alright, let's take a break, Hiruzen says. Hiruzen and Naruto have been training by Naruto's request because similar to Saiyans, the Askels have a form of ego where they have a natural desire to get stronger all the time. Over the past three and a half years, a lot of things have changed in the Hidden Leaf Village. The attack on the Hokage was pr was traced back to Danzo, and he was officially sent to a secret underground prison that nobody, where nobody knows except for the village elders and the Hokage where, about the location of it, but after a week or so of imprisonment, the order was given to the Anbu to kill Danzo. The foundation was disbanded, well, I mean, the rest that was still alive of it after the dozens of Anbu that were killed by Naruto. And now Itachi and Shisui didn't die, they're okay. 
Naruto has mostly been training his taijutsu and physical strength. Because, well, he's only four and a half. And can't do any ninjutsu yet. However, it is important to mention, right before Naruto was found by Hiruzen, the tailed wolf took about 90% of Naruto's chakra. Because Naruto, because Askrolds have an immense chakra reserve, similar to the Otsutsuki's, if not even larger. And because Naruto is like this prince of the Astral clan, since he's the son of the strongest Astral clan member, the clan head, the tailed wolf did this. Because even with only a tenth of his normal chakra, without the tailed wolf's power, Naruto still has much more power than an average human. Much more chakra, I'd say. About as much as a full Uzumaki, which, if you didn't know, has a lot of chakra. And that's only a tenth of his chakra. Due to Naruto being an Astral Clan member, Naruto will mature much faster in the ca uh, than in the canon story. So, Naruto is also much smarter and not as dense. Mostly because I want him to be. Because I don't like a stupid character. We cut back to Naruto and Hiruzen finishing their training for the day. You've been coming along very well and training very hard. Naruto, once you're five years old, I'm going to start teaching you a jutsu. Would specifically the clone jutsu, Hiruzen says. Yes, finally a real jutsu. Naruto responds. In this timeline, Minato and Kushina had twins, but Minato was able to survive the Nine Tails attack because Hiruzen assisted Minato in sealing Kurama, so they didn't have to use the Reaper Death Seal. Because with Hiruzen, Minato, and Kushina, two of the strongest Hokage and an Uzumaki sealing expert, they were able to seal the fox without giving up their lives, although it was still very hard because Gurma has a lot of chakra. One of the twins was a boy called Menma. The other was a girl called Mito, named after the first in Shuriki of the Nine Tails. This was a little earlier than Naruto's arrival on Earth, but because Naruto was already a year old when he landed on Earth, Naruto, Menma, and Mito are about the same age, and will become pretty good friends over the years since they're all kind of children of Hokage. Now we time skip another year. Naruto is five and a half, and Naruto has mastered the regular clone jutsu after a single day of training. He also learned some basic chakra control, like walking on a tree. Because he reason saw that Naruto had a lot of chakra, by the way, if you forgot, Naruto only has a tenth of his chakra, because the rest was sealed away by his tailed beast. Also, I need a name for the tailed beast. Um, he's the thirteen-tailed wolf slash panther, but I need a better name. So, if you have any suggestions, make sure to comment them down below. Anyways, Today, Naruto was promised he's going to find out what chakra nature he possesses. Hiruzen gets out a piece of paper. He tells Naruto to push chakra into the piece of paper like he put chakra into his feet to walk on trees. Naruto does so and the paper turns to ash, meaning he has fire nature. Hiruzen picks up another piece of paper and tells Naruto to do the same thing again, to test out if he maybe has more than one chakra nature. Naruto does the same thing as last time, but this time, the paper becomes wet. He also has water nature. Again, Hiruzen says, am, am I doing something wrong? Naruto asks, no, you're, you're doing amazing. Much better than I've ever seen anybody do your age. Now, please, do it one more time. Naruto puts his chakra into the piece of paper, and it starts crumbling. His third chakra nature is Earth. He does it again until the cycle of his chakra nature starts again and repeats. 
So by now, he has earth, water, and fire, but he keeps going and finds out he has wind and lightning as well. Naruto, you have all five chakra natures. I do? That's so cool. Yeah, it is. Can I try one more time? That was kind of fun. Hiruzen looks a little surprised, but... She says, mm, sure. Naruto picks up another piece of paper and puts chakra into it. This time, it's weird. Hiruzen is just waiting for the paper to turn to ash from Naruto's fire chakra nature, but... Something else happens to it. The paper just... Vanishes. It disappeared. It teleported away. They both looked surprised at each other. Is that a Kekei Genkai? I have no idea. For you viewer, I'm gonna explain. So, this is the astral element, as it's called. It lets you teleport by just thinking of the place you want to go and putting chakra everywhere in your body. It's as fast as the flying Raijin, if not even faster when you master it, and you don't need the kunai markers. The astral element also lets you breathe in space, don't ask how. Um, we cut forward three years later. It's the first day of the academy, but today's different than any other academy entrance day. Hiruzen has decided that the hidden villages should have a shared academy. It's a huge square three-story building made out of cement with large square windows all around with a gigantic training ground in the center of it. Naruto arrives at the huge building, goes inside, and almost gets lost in the hallways, but he finds his way to the classroom. Naruto is stared at when he comes in to the classroom, because he's known as the third Hokage's grandson all around, especially in the Hidden Leaf Village. Before Naruto could sit down pro properly, Menma and Mito arrive and go into the same classroom as Naruto. No, everybody's going wild. The fourth Hokage's children and the third Hokage's grandson are in all of class? There's no way I can compete with that. A kid in the back row yells out. Naruto, Menma, and Mito are exceptionally happy though, as they see each other as best friends forever and have known each other since they were babies. They sit in the same row in a group of three, and everybody looks jealous at them because they wanted to sit next to the Hokage's children or the third Hokage's grandson. The teacher arrives and tells everyone to settle down. They do so, and the teacher tells everyone they are good to spar today, so the teachers can see everybody's strengths, weaknesses, and be able to practice and train more efficiently. The students all yell out in happiness and go outside the spar. The matches take place and about halfway through the list of students, Naruto notices neither Menma, Mito, nor himself have been called out yet. He is kind of hoping to fight one of them, but isn't sure how strong they are. And he doesn't want to embarrass him or his grandfather by losing his first academy match. However, to everyone's surprise, Hiruzen and Minato walk out from the shadows. Minato declares, We have come here today to see the new generation of Shinobi and to assess their strength. Now everybody's even more stressed than they were before, not to embarrass themselves in front of two Hokages. Next match, Naruto Sertobi versus Menma Namikaze. This should be an interesting match, he reason says. It will indeed. They both take their fighting stance when the when Iruka, their supervisor, says three, two, one, go. They don't move, waiting for their permit to start the match and make an error. But hiding his true, his true intentions, Naruto lets his chakra flow freely in his body 
and concentrate on hitting Menma from behind. Naruto suddenly disappears, but when everybody looks back at Menma, they can see Naruto standing behind him, about to punch him from behind. Menma tries to block, but it's too late. Naruto lands a devastating blow and therefore wins the match, almost knocking Menma out. Naruto, how did you do that? Hiruzen asks. Because Naruto had practiced teleporting in secret to surprise Hiruzen, and that he did. Even Minato was surprised because Naruto wasn't just moving really fast, he genuinely teleported without any kunais, markers, or anything of the sort. Naruto explains that when he lets his chakra roam freely in his body and concentrates on a certain spot, he can teleport there in a mere instant. Hiruzen thinks back to when they were testing Naruto's chakra natures out, and the piece of paper disappeared. Could that be his Gekkei Ginkai? He thought to himself. Hmm. Well, anyways, the rest of the matches go as normal. And then, in the evening, Minato invites Hiruzen and Naruto to come over to their house and celebrate their children's first day at the academy. Now, we cut to Hiruzen and Naruto walking to Minato's house. Naruto, I have something to tell you. What is it? it it's been on my mind for a long time. Well, I wanted you to know that you are... Well, you're adopted, Naruto. I kind of figured. You, you, you did? Well, first of all, I'm not as pale as, as you. And you've never really wanted to talk about my parents before. Well, I guess that's true. But that doesn't change the fact that you're my grandpa. Wait, r really? You think so? Of course. They walk the rest of the way, with Hiruzen explaining how he found Naruto in a space pod. But he doesn't mention that the Anbu that tried to ambush them were killed by Naruto himself. When they arrive at the fourth Hokage's home, they see Kushina waving at them to come in. They come into the doorstep, and Minato walks out from the house to to beside Kushina. Minato starts talking to Hiruzen and Kushina yells, Menma, Mito, Naruto's here. The two children go downstairs to see Naruto standing in the doorstep, smiling at them. Mito runs at him, smiling back, and tells him they should go to her room. Menma goes with them, but it's mostly Naruto and Mito talking to each other. They are fantasizing about them three being in a Genin team. But Menma just says he won't stay Genin for long and will become the Hokage, just like his father. They hear a voice calling from the kitchen. Dinner is ready, Kushina yells. They all gather to eat, but continue their private conversations with the adults in one discussion and the kids in another. However, then Minato starts talking to Naruto. Naruto, your grandpa and I have been wondering, how about you live with us for a while? You could have your own room and walk to school with Menma and Mito, and you could still see Hiruzen pretty often. It's just that you wouldn't be living with him. So how about it? Y you would really do that for me? Well, of course, why wouldn't I? Tears start dwelling up in Naruto's eyes, and he mumbles, the, Then I would take you up on that offer. The rest of the evening is rather normal, from that point on, until after dinner. Hiruzen and Naruto are going to get Naruto's stuff so he can live in the Namikaze house. It's really okay if I live with them? Naruto asks. Well, of course it is. 
But won't you be lonely, Grandpa? I can visit you at any time. And also, I was extremely happy to hear Minato's idea. You see, I'm not the youngest fella anymore, and I want you to have a real family with siblings and parents. Oh, Grandpa, but you're my family too. I love you, Grandpa. Naruto and Hiruzen arrive at the Namikaze house. Naruto is supposed to sleep in Menma's room until his own room is ready for him, but Menma doesn't want to. So Minato suggests Naruto can sleep in her. By the way, if you're wondering why Menma is kind of acting like a Sasuke, well, he just kind of has that attitude, I'm going to become the strongest ever. So he doesn't want any, any distractions. But anyway, they go upstairs and Naruto puts his mattress on the floor, but Mito frowns for some reason. Isn't it going to be uncomfortable if you sleep on the floor? You could always just sleep in the bed with me, if you'd like. Oh no, that, that that's alright. I like sleeping on the floor, Naruto blushes. Alright then, whatever you say. Good night. Good night. Man, it has been a long day today. First it was the academy entrance, then I sparred Menma, then Grandpa told me I was adopted, and now I live in the Namikaze house under the same roof as the fourth Hokage. The yellow flash of the leaf. Naruto thinks to himself. It hasn't. It has, hasn't it? Wait. Who are you, and why are you in my head? Go to sleep, and everything will be explained to you. Fine then, Naruto thought. But he lay in his bed, thinking about that voice, but he was so tired, he actually didn't really fall asleep at all. He kind of passed out from exhaustion. When he woke up, it wasn't in his bed. Slash mattress. And it wasn't in Mito's room either. He woke up in a place that would later be known as the Mindscape. There, in front of him, he saw a massive wolf, or was it a panther? He couldn't tell. It kind of looked like both. But he, he saw that giant animal with wet fur taking a snooze in front of a giant lake. He must have been swimming in there. Hey, who are you? And where are we? We are in your mindscape. Your father has asked me to watch over you. My, my father? Who is my father and how do you know him? Well, Naruto, your father, as well as you, are what are known as astrals from the astral clan. One of the strongest clans in the universe. Really? So he wasn't lying. I really did come from from outer space. Yes, Naruto, you are the prince of all astrals. From the shadows, another mysterious figure appears. Hello, my son. S son? Yes, you are my son, Kobarama says. If you're wondering why Naruto's father is there, um, well, not only did he put a little bit of the tailed beast chakra into Naruto, he also put some of his own chakra into him, like Minato did, but more so Naruto can talk to him at basically any time. My father, so does that mean you're an alien as well? Yes, I'm an astral, just like you. Specifically, I am the astral clan head, the leader of the astrals. An astral, huh? I've only heard myths about you from my mother. This was a different man. An old one with purple eyes with many circles in them. Had Romo, the sage of the six paths. You're Natsutsuki, aren't you? You're Kaguya-san. 
Are you here to fight me on your on her behalf? Sorry, but it's not gonna end well. No, I just came to see what's going on, as I'm the protector of this planet. I see. I also see that you're half human. Would somebody please explain what is going on here? Naruto shouts out. I am your father, Naruto. You were sent away from the astral planet and from me for your own safety, as there has been a war waging for millions of years between the Otsutskis and the Astrals, and after every battle, entire planets are destroyed, and that is why you were sent away, not to get in harm's way. That over there is my good friend, Ataru, the thirteen-tailed wolf, but he also kind of resembles a panther. Yes, I'm naming the, th the tailed beast Ataru now. Deal with it. He is so powerful, he is often referred to as a Shinigami, a god of death, because when he unleashes his rage upon somebody, death and devastation is left behind. That... that sounds scary. Well, it is. But we've been friends for a long time. And... So have you with him, because without knowing it, he's actually been taking care of you. He was inside of your mindscape this entire time, and remember those Anbu that your grandfather told you about? He didn't defeat them. That was Ataru. He defeated them for you, because Hiruzen would have had a bad... He... It would have been very hard for him, to say the least. Naruto then talked the whole night long, but wasn't going to be tired the next day because his real body in the real world was actually sleeping in the meantime. Naruto slowly starts waking up again, but again, he's not in the same place as he went to sleep in. He turned around and saw Mito asleep, with her arms on his waist. He slowly woke her up, and he asked, Why am I in your bed? Oh, it's simple. I was cold at night, so I took your blanket. But then I felt bad, so I tried to wake you up. But you wouldn't, so I just carried you to my bed, so you wouldn't catch a cold. Well, it did actually feel pretty good. Before they could continue talking, Mito's alarm clock starts ringing, and soon later, Kushina knocks on the door, asking if she could come in. One second, Mom! Mito yells. They both get dressed with their backs facing each other, not to make the situation even weirder than it already was. They both leave the room, heading to breakfast, Nobody talks much, the three kids go to the academy together. After this, we cut to one and a half years later. Menma and Mito are now ten. The three knock on the Namikaze house's door. Kushina, Kushina and Minato open the door simultaneously, as today is Naruto's birthday. So Minato took a little bit of the day off to celebrate with the family. Surprise! They both shout out in happiness. Hi mom, hi dad. The three yell out at the same time. They all celebrate Naruto's birthday, and whilst eating cake, Naruto is asked to talk to Minato in private later. Naruto isn't quite sure why, but he is happy Minato wants to talk to him, so he will. So, later that evening, Minato is sitting back at the Hokage's chair doing some paperwork since he couldn't take the whole day off. When he hears a knock on the door. Come in. Oh, it's you, Naruto. You wanted to talk to me, Lord Forth? Oh, you can call me Minato, or even Dad, no matter where you are, you know that. Okay, Dad. But anyways, I have something important to ask you. I've watched you train in secret, and your skills far surpass anyone your age. 
even Menman Mito, the fourth Hokage says. Do you really think so? Naruto asks shyly. Oh yes, and because of that, I want you to join the Anbu Black Ops. If you're wondering, Naruto would be under the direct command of the Hokage since the village elders couldn't let history repeat itself and have another person like Danzo control the Anbu. And because Danzo doesn't control the Anbu anymore, the Chia massacre doesn't happen. And also because Minato is there. Really? Can I join the Anbu? Only if you want to, Naruto. I do. I, I do want to. Alright then. It's decided. From this moment on, you, Naruto Sartobi, are part of the Anbu Black Ops. After this night, we skip forward another year or so, and by now, Naruto's 11th birthday was about a week ago. Naruto has now had about a year in the Anbu and has become good friends with Itachi and Shisui, for they've done a lot of missions together. Without even knowing it, Sasuke, which is also one of Naruto's friends, is actually Itachi's younger brother. Then, after a difficult mission, they all decided to go to Itachi's place after they're done. The mission was about destroying a hidden stone bunker that was too close to the hidden leaf village, and so the fourth Hokage wanted to destroy it to destroy the opportunity of an invasion and another great shinobi war. <clears throat> Before it could even start, it was pretty easy since after Itachi and Shisui took out the guards in front of the building, Naruto used the astral release to, to teleport into the bunker without raising any suspicion. This is one of the reasons Naruto is always sent on these kinds of missions, since he can easily teleport into a bunker with ease. He has even trained teleporting himself as well as others with him, but it uses much more chakra and it has a range limit, so he doesn't do it often. They finish their mission and finally arrive at Itachi's home. Mikoto, Itachi's mother, mother opens the door Hi, Tachi. I see you brought friends with you. Yeah, hi, Mom. Hello, Mikoto, Shisui says. Hi, Shisui. However, somebody standing behind Mikoto. It's Sasuke. Big brother, you said you were gonna train me today and show me a new jutsu. Maybe another time, Itachi said with a frown. Before Naruto... Oh, actually... Wait, Naruto, what are you doing here? Sasuke asked, with a weird look on his face. Before Naruto could find an excuse about why he's there, since it was kept a secret that Naruto was in the Anbu. Since if people find find out that an 11-year-old boy was a high-ranking Anbu, it would cause outrage in the village. So... It was a secret that only very few people knew about. But before Naruto could say anything, Itachi quickly said, Me and him have become good friends. I see, Sasuke said, still looking a little suspicious. Well, come inside, you guys, Mikoto says, trying to lighten the mood, since the people Itachi brought with him seem very tired. She knows Itachi and Shisui are in the Anbu, but... There's no way Sa one of Sasuke's classmates is one too, right? I mean, he is only 11 years old after all. There's no way a boy like that can be as strong as an Anbu, which are usually about tuning to Jonin power level. And also, there's no way an 11 year old boy can kill on missions. I mean, he's only a kid. 
All these thoughts were going through Mikoda's mind, but she brushed it off, trying not to show her suspicion. When the three Anbu, as well as Sasuke, sit on the couch, they hear another knocking on the door. This time, Shisui and Itachi open the door with caution, since they weren't expecting anyone. They were a little bit careful when opening the door, but when they opened it, they saw Itachi's and Shisui's girlfriend. Why are you guys here? Itachi asked. That's no way to address your girlfriend, Itachi. I'm going to call Itachi's girlfriend... The what? That one that just talked, by the way. Izumi, and Shisui's girlfriend is gonna be called Miko. Anyways, come in, you two, Itachi said. What did you guys come here for anyways? And don't say you come. You came for us, Shisui asked. Well, alright, then. We sensed your guys' chakra, and also a really powerful one. That was even stronger than yours, and we thought you guys were trying to fight it. So, we came to help, but it seemed to have disappeared now. I see. The two Anbu, Anbu members started smiling, almost wanting to laugh, as they knew that that powerful chakra signature was none other than Naruto's. And that they were right. Shisui and Itachi could only keep up with Naruto's strength if they fought together. And even then, Naruto could potentially overpower them. Naruto was truly a beast in chakra. And keep in mind, that's, that, that's only a tenth of his chakra. But, actually, that's not quite true, because over the years, the thirteen-tailed wolf has given Naruto, bit by bit, a little more chakra, because he's seen that Naruto's chakra control is amazing, and that was one of the main reasons it didn't let Naruto have all of his chakra since the beginning, because trying to learn how to control all of that at once would be a real challenge, but doing it bit by bit is much easier. So now Naruto has about, let's say, a fifth, actually no, a, th a fourth, a fourth of his chakra, which is two and a half times of what he originally started with. Fugaku then comes into the living room, telling Sasuke he should take his friend from the academy with him and go play outside, because the adults need to talk. Naruto felt kind of disrespected, but was gonna go along with it anyways. Sasuke was about to take Naruto, but was then stopped by Itachi. No dad, I invited him over. He's with me, Itachi said wanting Naruto to stay with him, knowing Naruto is mature, is as mature as an adult, especially during his missions. Fine, but I need to talk to Shisu and you after to talk about you and your duties. I think Naruto should join us for that as well, Shisu said. Why would you say such a thing? Well, I, I can explain later, Naruto said, but for now I'll go to the Hokage's office, I have something to talk to him about. I'll come back later, Naruto says. Naruto steps outside, walking normally, pretends to walk away, but then when he's sure nobody's watching him, and nobody can sense his chakra anymore, he teleports in front of the Hokage's office immediately, and knocks on the door. Come in, Minato says. Hello, father, I've come to talk to you about something. Naruto says. Alright then, let's hear it. We then come back to, Ichi to the Ichiya compound where Itachi and Shisui are about to get lectured by Fugaku about their Anbu duties. But before he could get a word out, a young boy suddenly teleports him in front of him. That's the same boy as from as the one from before. 
What are you doing here, kid? This is no time for games. Fogaku says angrily. But I'm not here to play games. I'm here to listen to you. She so you wanted me to join, didn't you? Naruto quickly puts up a sound barrier around the room, and then he says, I'm actually in the Anbu Black Ops, just like Itachi and Shisui. To be precise, I'm actually their team leader. The captain. You're lying. Nobody your age can join the Anbu. He's telling the truth, Shisui says. But, Naruto, are you sure he's allowed to know? I mean, Lord Forth told us not to tell anyone, because your identity should be kept a secret. I mean, not even your mom or your sibling know. Naruto, uh, Itachi asks a little bit worried. It's alright, I talked it over with my dad and he says I could tell my close friends and teammates, as well as the clan heads and shinobi council members, as well as the civilian council should know. I see. Tachi says. Later that evening, Minato and Naruto are walking home together. They knock on the door to see Kushina, Menma, and Mito all standing in the doorstep, a little bit confused. It was obvious why Minato was so late to get home. He's the Hokage, but... They were wondering why Naruto was late. And wasn't at the academy today. Kushina looked furious. Come in, you guys, Kushina half yelled. Do you want to explain why you weren't at the academy today? Well, it's because, well, Naruto didn't know how to say it. Minato laid his hands on Naruto's shoulders, reassuring him. Naruto is in the Anbu Black Ops, Minato said prideful. He what? Now Kushina looked really mad. She had that look on her that you realize now why people call her the Red Hot Habanero. Minato, do you want to explain? She said a little bit slower than last time. Well, as I said, Naruto is in the Anbu. He's been an Anbu captain for a while now and has joined the Anbu about a year ago. I don't believe it, Menma says. But if you don't believe it, then why wasn't I at the academy today? Naruto says also with a little bit of pride. Well, you were just skipping, of course, Menma said. He wanted to be in the Anbu as well. He was jealous. Menma always wanted to be the best. He always wanted to be the strongest in the family, and he wanted to surpass his father once he's old enough. But the way it was going right now, that was still going to take a long, long time. Kushina then takes Minato into a separate room, yelling at him, telling him that Naruto is way too young to have joined the Anbu. But Minato holds his ground. He tells him no. He tells her no. Naruto is strong, respectful, and he's an amazing shinobi. Later that evening, during dinner, Menma asks, Dad, why are you training Naruto more than me? But Minato looks confused, and so does Naruto, because, well, Minato has never actually trained Naruto before. Well, Menma, I've actually never, I, I haven't trained Naruto. You're lying, there's no way he could join the Anbu without training with you before. No, he did it all on his own, and with his grandpa. 
Yeah, that's that's right, Naruto says. Naruto is a little bit sad of how the way that his family reacted. The only way the on, the only person that seemed a little bit happy for him was Mito. She just smiled at him. That's the kind of reaction he wanted to see. But I guess it was understandable from mom, but Menma, he didn't know. After this evening, we skip forward yet another year. This is the last day of the academy. Precisely their passing exam to become Genin. So, the, some people go, and then it's Naruto Saratobi's turn. Naruto goes. Well, I mean, b before this, by the way, they all did the paper exam, and Naruto aced it. He didn't get a single question wrong. But now comes the comes the shuriken part. Naruto hits 100% of his shuriken, which was 20. Which means that he got even better than Sasuke and me and Menma and Mito. With all three of them getting 19, but Naruto got 20 out of 20. The teachers are really surprised. I mean, not that they didn't expect Naruto to be so good, but they didn't know Naruto was that good. Then comes the cloning part. They all have to make one proper clone. However, as we know Naruto, he can't hold back. Naruto makes 50 clones. And everybody looks surprised. Uh, y y you pass, the teacher mutters. He, he doesn't know what to say. I mean, not even a, jo a, a Chunin could do that. Maybe a Jonin, but that's still super hard to make. He would need a lot of chakra to do that. But as we all know, Naruto has more than enough chakra. Because he's actually got, um, gotten even more chakra over the years since, due to his immense chakra, how would you say this? His chakra control, let's just call it. He has a lot of chakra control, and so the tailed beast has given him more and more of his own chakra back, but none of None of his chakra. If that was confusing, basically Naruto is getting more of his original chakra back, but none of Ataru's chakra. Which, if you forgot, Ataru is the 13 tailed wolf. So Naruto now almost has his full amount of chakra, which he was born with, which is almost 10 times as much as a full Uzumaki has. Which, if you don't know, is like more than a kage has that amount of chakra could probably rival hashirama or madara it's just insane so naruto aces every single test he gets and becomes a genin mizuki doesn't try to do any of the little tricks on naruto but tricks Kiba. Kiba goes through the forest when suddenly he gets tapped on the shoulder from behind by Naruto. Naruto asks him to give him the scroll, but he refuses. Kiba is going to fight for the scroll. But Naruto knows that if, they j if Naruto really showed his true power, it would, it would just be it. It wouldn't be funny. I mean, Naruto would absolutely destroy Giba. So then, before their fight starts, Mizuki actually starts and throws a gigantic shuriken at both of them. 
Naruto deflects and Kiba jumps to the side. Naruto then takes the scroll, teleports into the Hokage's office, and hands it to Minato. Then he quickly teleports back, pins down Mizuki, and calls for other Anbu help, especially Itachi and Shisui. They then escort Mizuki back to the Hokage's office, imprisoning him and Kiba. Well, Kiba didn't have any time to learn anything from the scroll or do anything else with it. But without anyone noticing, Naruto actually did copy one technique, which, as we all know, is the multi Shadokun Jutsu. Today's the Academy passing exams. Menma, Mito, and Naruto are walking to the Academy and see Sasuke and his brother Itachi waving him go by. And good luck for the day. Uh, well, he won't need it, but it's still a nice thing to do. Naruto walks over to Ichachi and they talk for a few minutes. With Mindo, with Menma and Mito already walking ahead. Naruto has one minute left to go to the academy on time and has to bother Flicker there without anyone seeing him else he'll be late. But she doesn't want to be for the exams, the passing ones. Naruto senses everyone's chakra and picks a perfect route for him, so no one would notice him. Then when he was about to enter the classroom, Iruka walks up behind him, asking how he got there so fast without Iruka seeing him. Iruka at this point was a little bit suspicious as he doesn't know that Naruto's in the Anbu. Naruto tells him a weird excuse, but Iruka doesn't buy it. He, he, it's obvious it's a lie. They both enter the classroom, and the students do the written test. Naruto, of course, aces the exam. Then, it's for the shuriken and kunai test. And of course, out of 20 shuriken, Naruto hits 20 bullseyes. Sasuke gets 18, and Menma and Mito each get 19. Then comes the hardest test of all for a lot of students. They have to perform a clone jutsu. They have to make one clone pretty much perfectly. Menma and Mito each make five clones, which Iruka is pretty surprised at, and all the people in the classroom start cheering for them. But he is interested to see what Naruto can do, because in all the tests, he's been the top student. Naruto stands up, goes to the front of the classroom, and makes one clone. Or does he? Ruka says, you pass, expecting, having expected a little more than that. But then a student starts screaming. She's staring at the ceiling. Then everybody focuses, shifts to the ceiling, where they all see 20 shadow clones using chakra to stand upside down. Having kunai is prepared to jump down and pin somebody down. Everyone's now staring at the ceiling. Naruto passes and is now crowned Rookie of the Year. But not only he passes, of course Menma, Mito, and Sasuke also pass along with the Konoha 12. In this case it's a little more. Don't ask how I'll do the teams, just, just, just continue listening. The Namikaze family, along with Naruto, who is basically a part of that family now, since he's been living there for, for a few years, and Hiruzen celebrate the children becoming Genin. <clears throat> On the next day, everybody's sitting in the classroom, and the Jonin teachers come in one by one. This time, Kakashi isn't as late as in the original, mostly because Nar Minato, his sensei, is still alive. And if Minato found out Kakashi, his only student that was still alive, was late for his children's first day as Genin, he would be pissed. But anyways, Kakashi comes into the classroom and yells out, Team 7, Naruto Saratobi, Menma Namikaze, and Mito Namikaze, meet me on the roof. Everybody looks surprised at the three, since they're the three strongest students in the academy. 
and now they're all in the same getting team? If you're wondering why the three strongest students are in the same team, let's call it plot convenience and say Minato pulled some strings in the background to, to make us happy. Naruto immediately teleports to the roof even before Kakashi arrives. He asks about their likes, dislikes, and goals. Mika starts and says, I want to protect my family and the one I love. Not looking at him, but thinking of Naruto. Mito x Naruto ship. Then Menma says, I want to surpass my father and become the greatest Hokage of all time. Kakashi sees a little bit of Obito in Menma, but doesn't think much of it. Then it's Naruto's turn, and he says, I don't like a lot of things. I don't dislike a lot of things. I want to protect the ones I love, but I also have a goal that I can't share with anyone. They all look at him a little bit suspicious. Alright then, meet me at training round 7 tomorrow, and don't eat breakfast or else you'll vomit, Kakashi says. On the next day, the group meets, and as in the classroom, Kakashi isn't light, because he knows Minato would kill him if he was. Kakashi explains the bell test, of course leaving out the part about teamwork. In this story, through their close friendship, Menma, Mito, and Naruto have learned and developed to work as a team, and so have exceptional teamwork even when it's not asked of them and not needed. Mito starts throwing shuriken around Kakashi to, to restrict his movements. Then Menma jumps into some hand-to-hand combat. Naruto uses a few fireball jutsus as support and then assists Menma in close-range fighting. Then when Naruto gets bored of pretending to act to fight and then quickly snatches the two belts with his onbu speed. It's not really called onbu speed, I just made that up. Anyways, he then throws one bell to Menma and one to Mito. You pass, Kakashi says, a little bit confused, as he was barely able to see Naruto's movements at the end. Missions start tomorrow, and don't be late. They all start their D-ranked missions, but then about three days after their bell test, Naruto gets, ni- gets an idea. An amazing one at that. Why not just create a hundred shadow clones to do the D rank missions for me? As they are really boring. And I would have more time to hang out with my friends and do on boot stuff that's actually interesting. He does so and accepts as many D rank missions as he can get his hand on. Even during his free time, he does some missions. Well, not him. Rather, his shadow clones do it for him. But those missions don't count for the team, but only for his personal statistics, earning him a fair amount of cash, especially for a child. Also, with his onboard degrees, where he does some A and S rank missions, as he is a very strong onbu, one of the strongest, actually. He gets paid quite a lot for what he does there, too. So... My man Naruto's kind of stacked on the cash. And for the first time in a long time, Konoha actually barely has any D rank missions left to do, as Naruto alone has already done dozens of them in a matter of days. He's literally doing like. 20, 30 missions in a single day. Everybody, especially Minato, Hiruzen, and Kushina, are very proud of Naruto. And not only now is Naruto Rookie of the Year, he is a prodigy. A real prodigy. After a while, Menma asks for a C rank mission. And Kakashi does so as well, as he knows that his team is very powerful. Tazuna walks into the room, and Hiruzen explains the story and their mission. 
Kazuna doesn't even think about trash talking Team Seven this time because they are they're all children of the Hokage, and you don't disrespect children of Hokage because he's heard that Naruto is doing a lot of missions without actually doing missions because all of those missions are being done by the Shadow Clones. But anyways, they start their journey. And on the way, Naruto sees the puddle. Kakashi does so as well, but before he could do anything, Naruto releases the Genjutsu, and before anyone notices what has happened, the two demon brothers are already tied together onto a tree, with Naruto having knocked one unconscious and the other put under Genjutsu so that he would tell Naruto everything he knows. Naruto then explains to the group everything about Gato and Zabuza and their plan to kill the bridge builder. And then they continue their journey. As Kakashi was going to turn around, but Menma and Naruto told him that they could manage the mission. And at that point, Naruto actually told Kakashi in secret that he is part of the Anbu. And I haven't said I haven't said anything about this, but Naruto actually has a nickname in the Anbu, and his nickname is known all around. He's pretty much famous in the Anbu, but very little people actually know his true identity except for Itachi, Shisui, and the Hokage. Then, mist surrounds them, and a large blade is thrown at Kakashi, but Naruto catches it. And I think you know who this blade is from. Naruto then throws the blade back at Zabuza, and whilst everyone is focusing on the blade, Naruto quickly makes a shadow clone to get Zabuza from the back. You're not too bad for Geni. You might be stronger than your sensei, Zabuza says. Thanks, but I don't see him as my sensei. More like my subordinate. Zabuza rushes Naruto. Naruto goes in with a kunai, but before he does, he tells Mito to protect the, to protect Tazuna, the bridge builder. Menma and Kakashi are, fo- are supposed to fight Haku, because with his Anbu sensory abilities, Naruto immediately sends Taku that was hiding in the trees. Naruto fakes his attack like Minato did when he fought the masked man and quickly teleports behind Zabuza and sticks a kunai into his back, but Zabuza dodges. However, he was too late. He was still badly scraped and is now bleeding pretty badly. Naruto just thinks to himself, this is supposed to be one of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist? I'll let the rest of Team Seven handle them. Naruto starts waiting to see how the fight turns out. Kakashi starts to fight a hurt Zabuza, which means that he won't be trapped in a water prison jutsu. Minato, eh, I mean, Mito, sorry, my bad. Mito now joins in on the fight to assist her brother Menma in the fight against Haku. Menma and Mito f- then get trapped in Haku's ice mirror jutsu, and just as Haku threw the senbon at Mito, Menma took the hit. Menma seemed to be dead. Everyone thinks he's dead, and Naruto's overtook by rage. Naruto doesn't even take the time to go check if Menma is alive. Everyone stands up and starts wa- Sorry, I mean Naruto stands up and starts walking to Haku along the way. A weird blue cloak starts surrounding him. Two orbs start floating behind him and a gigantic fireball starts flying above his head, in the direction of Haku. But it's not a normal fireball. It's surrounded by earth and water, as well as lightning and electricity. 
and the four elements combine into a single sphere, which then starts flying at Haku faster and faster. I will destroy you. Naruto screams so loud, everybody, including Zabuza and Kakashi, start staring at him. Zabuza goes in to save Haku, but the Sphere of Death, as I will be calling it, hits the ground and there was an explosion. You could compare the look of the explosion as if an atomic bomb hit. Before they could be hit by the explosion, Naruto unconsciously teleports everyone, meaning Team 7, including the bridge builder, to beside him so that they don't get hurt. But at this point, Naruto is floating 10 meters in the air. Zabuza and Haku, along with a perimeter of 50 meters of land, are completely destroyed, annihilated, gone. Naruto's power, Naruto powers down and passes out from immense stress and adrenaline, as well as the physical strain on his body. Naruto sleeps for two days and two nights, and when he wakes up, he finds himself in a room and sees Menma standing next to him with all bandages around him. But when Naruto turns around, he sees Mito, who is sleeping in a chair next to him. She looked to... If Naruto woke up and hasn't eaten or drank in a long time, and so passed out from exhaustion. But don't worry, she's okay. Naruto stands up and goes to Kakashi to ask him what happened, since his mom his memory is a little fuzzy. Kakashi explains that Menma was in death near state and Naruto went on a rampage, but absolutely destroyed everything in his path, including Zabza and Haku. He also seemed to have a dojutsu. His eyes turned blue but with Rinnegan circles in it and it had one sharing down like Tomoe in each eye. It was something like that was never seen before on Earth. This was the Astral Kekegenkai. I need a name for it guys, so if you have one, make sure to comment it down below. Team 7 doesn't go to train tree walking because the three Genin are pretty strong and can even water walk. A few days pass and then on the last day when finishing the bridge, Gato and his men arrive to destroy the bridge before it's completed. Naruto oversleeps as in the original, protects Tazuna's family from Gato's two henchmen and quickly rushes to the bridge. He then counts the numbers and prepares one attack that will kill them all without destroying too much of the bridge. Because Naruto did most in the mission, the bridge is named the Great Naruto Bridge and Team 7 returns to Konoha. Then Kakashi tells Team 7 about ch the tuning exams and in this timeline, they all accept and already know what they are, the tuning exams, because their father is basically in charge of them. They all accept and Naruto is especially excited since his power is way too great for some D and C rank missions. Although he does blame himself for letting Menma be hurt, because it was Naruto's arrogance that led to Menma's injury. I will get into the first part of the exams in this video, but before the exams start, Team 7 sees Konohamaru, the third Hokage's grandson, in an alleyway, which Naruto has become good friends with since they're both Hiruzen's grandchildren, basically. Naruto asks Kankuro to put Konohamaru down, but Kankuro won't listen. Then Naruto quickly hits Kankuro's legs from behind, making him trip and fall on the ground. Naruto then picks up Konohamaru, and although it uses a lot of chakra, Naruto teleports Konohamaru to the third Hokage's office. Naruto would then ask Gara to come out from hiding, 
and Gara is intrigued by this. A few days later, Team 7 arrives in the building for their first exam, and Naruto immediately disbands the Genjutsu. They then all sit down to take the test, but Naruto got every answer right, and really fast at that. I'm talking Itachi and Minato level. Since he has an ancient celestial being with all that knowledge and experience inside of him, and he has an ancient tailed beast, as well as in the story, he's smarter as he is an astral. The last question comes, Naruto gives a speech, and because he's basically the Hokage's son, everybody is encouraged. Anko does her entrance, and everyone goes over to the forest of death. Anko explains the, te the second test of the Chunin exams, and so it starts. <clears throat> Naruto and Menma and Mito enter the forest of death and get the two and get the well. I mean, they already have one, so they only need the other scroll that they don't have yet. They get it so fast. Well, I mean, really, it's just Naruto getting it, but technically it's the team. So, let's just say the team gets it so fast that they're rivaling Gara's team speed. And Team 7 makes its way over to the power, to the tower, apologies, to the tower to pass the exam. They arrive at the exact time that Gara's team arrives at the tower, which makes Gara a little bit surprised. And he recognized Naruto as that kid that he met a little earlier. We cut to Team 11 that I didn't mention, but consists of Sasuke, Kiba, and Sakura. They are targeted by Orochimaru, like in the original, but in this t but this time, Team 11 gets injured more badly than in the canon series because Naruto, with his QB influence, was the was really the only one in the team that fought back against Orochimaru's bloodlust, and well, him actually doing something. Sasuke again is just kind of useless because I mean. He just can't do anything against Orochimaru's bloodlust. Sakura, I mean, what do you expect? She's useless. As always, Kiba tries to fight, but is just way too weak. He can't do anything against Orochimaru and gets dumped on by just one of the snakes. Team 11 faces the sound Genin, and everything goes as normal with the other Konoha 12, or in this case... Konoha 15 because there's an extra team. The only extra people are actually Menma and Mito, but let's just say that there's one more person that passed the Genin exams this time. Sakura fights off the sound Genin until Sasuke uh, wakes up and destroys them. Team 11 meets up with Kabuto and he helps them get their mission scroll missing scroll which they need to pass. I should mention, because in the academy, there were students from every hidden village, there were many more people taking the exams together, along with the five Kage all overseeing the exams together. So there was much more security in the leaf at this time. After a few days, the five Kage... By the way, this is when the second exam is over. So, the five Kage decide that there were so many people taking the exams and that actually passed the first two, they are going to add an extra round of preliminary rounds, which are going to be 1v1 matches, just like in the original. There are much more matches, but I'm just going to focus on the important ones that we care about. First match, Sasuke versus Random Cannon Fodder. I think we all know that Sasuke obviously wins though he has difficulties due to his curse mark. Second is Sakura Racino, it ends just like in the original, with both of them tying, so none of them pass. Then Kiba versus Tamari, of course Tamari is really strong, she wins. Next up is Konkuro versus a random Sanshinobi, 
Actually, let's make it a stone shinobi. Doesn't matter, but whatever. So, Conqueror versus Stone Shinobi. Conqueror passes, of course, with his puppets. Now it's Mito versus Tenten. Mito, of course, as the prodigy that she is, wins. Now it's Menma versus Random Cloud Shinobi. I think we all know where this is going. Menma destroys him. Now, for the more serious matches. Naruto versus Rock Lee. Now, I'm sorry for all the Rock Lee supporters, but I just don't see him winning. I think Naruto would use his teleportation to confuse Artsmar and finally destroy his opponent. This of course being a metaphor because he doesn't really want to hit or hurt Rock Lee, just not to win. Gara's fighting against another Sand Genin, and Gara's well, Gara has a reputation, let's just say, in the sand. Uh, so his opponent is practically pissing his pants before his fight, and he doesn't want to risk dying, so he just gives up before the fight starts. Gara is a little disappointed since he was ready to fight and give us all, but I think we all know it's for the best for everyone in the room that Nar that Gara isn't fighting. I think I covered everyone important. Actually, no, Shikamaru. Let's just say Shikamaru fights a random person, he wins the fight, he passes. Alright, I think I covered everyone now, so I'll skip the rest of their matches. Now everyone is given a one month time to train and a recovery break. Team 7 arrives at the Namikaze house, this of course only being the Ganin, um, and they all celebrate all night long as they've made it to the finals. On the next day, Team 7 meets up with Kakashi to decide what they will do for the next month. And Kakashi says, I've decided I will train Menma. Menma nods, and Mito says, I actually had planned to train with... to train my Uzumaki seals and other abilities with Mom. Of course, referring to Kushino. What about you, Naruto? Kakashi asked. Maybe you can train with Dad, Mito asked. I don't know. He seems pretty busy at the moment with the Chunin exams going on. Naruto responds with a sad look on his face. I will train you, kid. A familiar voice in Naruto's head said. Is that you, Wataru? Yes, it's me. And I want to train you for the time being. There's a lot you need to learn and can learn about the Astrals, as well as your Kika Yenkai. And you need to learn to use some of my power, Tara explains. <clears throat> I have the perfect person to train with, Naruto yells out. Of course, nobody understands who he means, but they go along with it. After a day or so, Ataru finally gets a brilliant idea. He doesn't tell Naruto, but he sets Naruto up to become... Not to get enraged, but... Well, he's gonna make him a little more enraged, because that actually gives Ataru some power. Because the seal is a little bit loosened when Naruto is in an enraged form. And that's why he can use a lot of its chakra then. And whilst the Taru has that little bit of freedom, he uses about half of his chakra to revive someone. Now, I won't say who this is yet. I will probably say it this episode. But, let's see. So then... This person comes out from the shadow, and Naruto doesn't know who that is, but he has pale skin, similar to himself, and his hairstyle is a little similar. He has blue orbs flying around him, just like Kakashi described Naruto had, and he, he has blue eyes with three Tomoe in it. 
Hmm. You've been training well, my son. Naruto is shocked as he he thought his dad died. Ataru explains the situation that he was able to at least temporarily revive Naruto's father. He did this neither with the impure world uh, incarnation or the Edo Tensei, nor with a Rinnegan ability. It's just something that Ataru can do. Because if you have enough chakra, you can do such things. Let's just say. Okay. Um. So anyways, Naruto has his little moment with his dad, and his dad asks Naruto if he wants to trade with him. Naruto, of course, agrees, because his dad couldn't show him in the real world, so he did it in Genjutsu. Actually, no. Let's say Naruto's father teleported both of them to the moon for him to be able to show Naruto his true power. Of course, Naruto thought he was going to die because, I mean, there's no oxygen in space, but he then learned he can breathe in space for it somehow. Alright? I don't know how either. Um, but anyways, Naruto's father does a demonstration and explains some stuff. Naruto learns a few things about his dojutsu as well, but there's still a lot of things he needs to learn about it. For example, he learned that whilst he's using his dojutsu, he can create... He can make jutsus without using hand signs or saying them out loud. This being the name, of course. So he can use jutsus like the one he used. Which, by the way, um, I am going to change the name of it. Actually, never mind. It's still going to be called Sphere of Death, just because I'm one or two. But I actually have thought of a different ability as well for the Dojutsu. If you have other abilities that you want me to add, you can comment them down below. But I have a few that I want to add. But anyways, we continue in the story. So... Naruto's dad is now teaching Naruto. By the way, if you forgot his name, his name is Kobarama. So Kobarama is teaching Naruto, and Naruto gets an idea. He has told his father about how he Ruzen adopted him, and also how Minato kind of adopted him. But he wants both to meet his real father. So. One day, Kobarama and Naruto walk into the third Hokage's house whilst he's not on duty. Shiruzen asks why Naruto is visiting and who that man is behind him, and Naruto smiles and says, Grandpa, that's... that's my dad. Shiruzen is shocked. Your... your, your father? Yeah, nice to meet you, Kobarama says, and thank you for looking out to my son, she says. Well, of course, but... Uh, how, how, how did you meet him, Naruto? Oh, well, you see, I actually have a tail beast inside of me, and he revived my dad from the dead. What? He reasons baffled. He faints, because he he can't believe what Naruto just said. They make sure he's fine, because, I mean, he's pretty old, so... He's not... People have to look out for him, let's just say. But he's fine. And so, the one-month training is over. And now, the finals of the tuning exams take place with Naruto's father, Kogarama, the leader of the Astrals, looking how much Naruto really learned.
So, anyways, what are these Chunin exams that Naruto has been talking about and training for? Oh, well, here on our planet, most of the warriors are what are called Shinobi. Shinobi have different ranks to assess their power level, and Naruto is currently a Genin and is aiming to become a Chunin, but he has to pass certain exams first, he was explains. Ah, I see. So how strong are these? Again, Naruto is competing against. Kobarama asks. Well, I can show you, Hiruzen says. Come with me. Oh, that's alright, Gigi. My dad can teleport to its hearts, to his heart's content and take as many people with him as he wants because he basically has unlimited chakra. He just needs to know where to. You know what? We should actually wait till the finals of the exams where he can see the strongest Genin right by his eyes. Alright then, let's train until then though, Komarama responds. We cut to the finals of the Chunin exams where Naruto is about to fight Snasuke. Komarama, who was sitting next to Kakashi without them knowing each other, was very excited to see Naruto's skills and to see how powerful other humans are. Sasuke, unknowing of Naruto's potential and power, starts trash-talking him and says he is an Uchiha elite and Naruto has no chance of beating him. Naruto just responds with a smile and Sasuke gets into a fanged position a little bit angered. Naruto doesn't. The proctor starts the match and before Sasuke could dash towards Naruto, Naruto quickly teleports behind him and chops Sasuke on the neck, winning him the match. Kabarama is a little bit shocked at how weak humans are, but it makes sense that Naruto is strong since he has, so since he is astral prince, since he's an astral prince. Sorry about that. The next match is Gara versus Mito, and whilst Mito is very strong. Kara as a Jinchuriki is just way too powerful. Mito prepares her kunai and tries to combo Kara with a Jutsu and quickly throw the kunai before Kara could react, but Kara didn't move. He didn't even flinch. When the Jutsu hit him, his sand protected him, and so the thrown kunai won't do much either. There will be a fight similar to the Rock Lee vs. Gara fight with Gara almost badly hurting injured. With Gara almost badly injuring Mito, but Minato was going to interfere as it is his own daughter. But before she could, Naruto teleports and stops the sand before it could hit Mito. Gara wins the match. Now it's Menma vs. Shikamaru. And they fight for a while. Shikamaru captures Menma in the shadow, possession jutsu, and then gives up. Next up is Tamari, and she's against a random Cloud Shinobi. The match is pretty easy for her, and with her three moon technique, Tamari of course wins. Let's just say Conqueror wins a match against a random Getty as well. Then three. Sorry, the eight remaining fighters will battle each other in a battle royale match, and the last one standing will be guaranteed the position of the Chunin, whilst the rest of the Shun, Chun -e, Genin, will be assessed on their skills as everyone else. Everyone prepares to fight. The important fighters that we know that are in this match are Naruto, Minma, Tamari. Gar and Conqueror. The Proctor starts the match, and now the entire crowd is cheering because everyone, including the five Kage, are excited to see how strong the newer generation is. However, everyone except for the Kaze Kage was surprised that three of the eight people in the last Battle Royale match were from the Hidden Sand. There were two Hidden Leaf, but both of them were the Hokage's children, so it kind of makes sense. Well, one is adopted, but anyway, whatever. Then there's one hidden stone, one hidden cloud, and one hidden mist. 
so there is at least one shinobi from every village. The battle royale begins and the three shinobi from the Hidden Cloud, Hidden Mist, and Hidden Stone, as well as Konkuro in a gauge in a battle. Mostly there being two matches against 1v1, if that makes sense. Tamari first waits out to fully understand the situation to make a strategy and plan. Kara is as lifeless as always and Mito, sorry, Minma does the same as Tamari, hatching a plan before acting. However, then Minato and the other Kage look over to Naruto. He, I kid you not, is pulling Jiren. He's sitting down with his legs crossed and is meditating. Then after five seconds or so, he starts slightly floating up above the ground, similar to how Goroma, similar to how Hagoroma sits, where Jiren was sitting in the Tournament of Power in Dragon Ball Super, if you've seen it. Kankuro beats his opponent as Nadal looking to fight Minma, as he doesn't want to fight his sister and Naruto is giving off an evil aura. Minman and Kankuro start fighting and Tamari now, Tamari now joins in on the fight. Kankuro and Tamari are now having a three-way, sorry, Minma, Kankuro and Tamari are now having a three-way battle, but Tamari mostly focuses on Minma as she doesn't want to hurt her little brother. Then, Naruto stands up while still floating, by the way, and then his eyes start to glow, and I think we all know where this is going. There is a blue cloak surrounding him, similar to how Minato wears his Hokage cloak. There is a large sphere above him, with two ball-looking things behind him. Kobarama is impressed, as he didn't know Naruto already unlocked his first Tomoe of his dojutsu. And I will actually explain something, because... Alright, so their dojutsu, which I will now call the Astrogan. So the Astrogan also has three Tomoe, as well as similar state to a Mangekyo, where after a traumatic experience, it unlocks extra abilities, which are extremely powerful. So you could compare the powers of the one Tomoe, uh, similar to a mix of the Sharingan and a few powers of the Tenseigon including the power not to need any hand seals for Jutsu. Now the Tutumi is similar, has some similar abilities to the Renegon, which I will show later. With I'm just gonna spoil one thing. There's an ability called Universal Devastation. Which is like the planetary devastation of the Renegon, just like on the next level. And then the three Tomoe for mature um, Astrodon is a very powerful Dojutsu, which you could compare to the mix of the Tenseigon and the Renegon's abilities. And I don't have a name yet for the last ability. But for now, I'll just call it the Mangekyo. And the Mangekyo has abilities that only Kobarama, Naruto's father, has unlocked because it's such a legendary dojutsu that none other than his own father have ever been able to use it. Now, everybody's focus is on Naruto. And even the all the Genin stop fighting as Naruto just gives off an evil aura, and even even the the nine tails inside of Menma and Mito is mostly in Mito is just dumbfounded as it really reminds them of Hagoromo's chakra and his ability not to need hand signs for Jutsu. 
they all look at his eyes and everybody sees the bluish glow. Kobarama cheers on Naruto and everybody starts staring at him and asks who he is. Well, Kakashi asks who he is. He then responds, oh, well, isn't that obvious? I'm Naruto's father. His father? Well, yes. Well, he was technically adopted, but... Well, not for me, but he is my gen... He's my actual son. I see. So, what is this dojutsu of his? Oh, well, I can't tell you that, but... I'll tell you that this... It is a very powerful dojutsu that rivals that of the Sharingan, or the Renegon, as you know it. The Hidden Cloud Genin, once he saw the Sphere of Death, he turned around and he ran for his life because he knew he ain't gonna survive that. Five Kage were shocked as they felt immense chakra and it came from Naruto. And they were actually scared of the sheer amount of chakra that Naruto was emitting. However, Kobarama, Naruto's father, was the only one in the stadium who was super happy and was enjoying the show. Of course, he will step in if something happens or if Naruto can't control his power. Naruto shoots off the sphere of death, but it's not as fast as last time, so you can imagine it like a Genkidama or Spirit Bomb from Dragon Ball. Tamari tries to push it back with some wind jutsus, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't work. Instead, the sphere seems to absorb the jutsu and increase the size, and it's now moving even faster than it did before. Yes, it can absorb jutsu and make the power its own. Before the attack hits the floor, Kobarama teleported himself to the arena and then he took the attack with him to the moon. As the Sphere of Death would probably destroy most of the village and he doesn't want that. Everybody's now looking at the moon because even though you couldn't see it a few moments ago, it's now glowing blue and everyone can see a big crater on the moon that looks unnatural, like a bomb just hit. Kobarama teleports back and says, I'm proud of you, son. The entire stadium is in awe and no one can get a word out. Then, after discussing the events that just occurred in front of them, the five Kage all stand up, and Minato, current Hokage, says, We, the five Kage of the Hidden Villages, declare you, Naruto Sartobi, a Jonin, and the winner of this match. Everybody looks at the Kage, if they have something to say, but they're all just nodding, and smiling at Naruto in agreement. Winner of the finals of the tuning exams is Naruto Sartobi, the proctor yells, so everybody hears him. All the villagers in the stadium are chatting to each other about what just happened. Of course, Itachi and Shisui, who were also watching, knew that Naruto would win, undoubtedly, but even they after years of experience working with Naruto on missions, they'd never seen such an attack, and it didn't even need any hand signs to make. Menma is shocked, but also happy for Naruto. But he is a little bit jealous, as he was determined to become a Chunin. Minato is of course happy, sorry, Mito is of course happy for Naruto, and I will be telling you guys, I will evolve the ship a little more. Which, if you didn't know, is Mito x Naruto. And really starting Naruto's love life. As I don't think Naruto would have a girlfriend before the age of 12 or 13. But now he's kind of getting in that age, you know what I'm saying? 
Minato acted all proud in front of the crowd, but even he was shook right to his bones. A few seconds later, Naruto walks out of the arena with his dad, Kobarama. The five Kage go over to congratulate Naruto on its win, but also to ask him not only where Naruto got that power from, but who that man beside him is, as no one had ever seen him before except for Hiruzen. Congratulations on your win, Naruto, Minato said. Thanks, Dad. You displayed amazing power, young one, Onoki said. Oh, thank you, Lord Tsuchikage. Oh, please, you can call me Onoki. Dad, huh? So this is the human that adopted you, Kobarama asked. Yes, that's me. I'm Naruto's father, Minato said. Father, huh? <laughs> Uh, that's funny. What's so funny about that? Well, in truth, is I I'm I'm Naruto's father. No, that's not true. Hiruzen, the third Okage, found Naruto when he was only a child. Yeah, and well, it's a long story. I can explain later. That it's true, Naruto said. But then why then why didn't you raise Naruto? It was complicated, but basically it was to protect him. You could compare my battle with somebody else of a different clan to how you humans see Madara Uchiha and Hashirama Senju. We were, we were like titans in the galaxy, who everyone feared, but everyone also respected us, as we were the strongest amongst all. I see, and then how did Naruto get here exactly? If you're claiming not to be from here, then how did Naruto get here? Oh, well, basically, I sent him on a space pod a thousand years ago, but he seemed to get got lost in space, and so he entered a space void, as we call it, and he stopped aging, even though a lot of time passed in the meantime. And then he landed on Earth. Oh, by the way... Dad, Minato, I don't know what to call you anymore, but anyways, I'm also Jinchuriki, like Menman Mito. A Jinchuriki? But of what? Well, similar to how you have the nine-tailed beasts on Earth, Koparama explained. We in space have the thirteen-tailed wolf. His name is Ataru. And I put a little bit of his chakra into Naruto to protect him on his way to Earth. As I wouldn't be there to do that. And then I died. However, recently, Taru managed to revive me, at least for the meantime. Also guys, I have something to say. Um, a subscriber actually explained this to me, <laughs> and that is that Ataru wouldn't actually be sealed in Naruto, but rather just have his chakra inside of Naruto. Don't take that in the wrong way. Um, <laughs> because, well, Kobarama and Ataru trusted each other with their lives, and we're great friends, so I don't see why Kobarama would seal Ataru. Um, thanks for pointing that out. But anyways, they all head home, including Kobarama. And Hiruzen also joins them, as Naruto is definitely a Chunin, sorry, a Jonin now. And Menman Mito, well... Maybe not Mito, but Menma might even become a Chunin. Because the 
actual assessing of power takes a few days and is not decided on the same day as the exams. However, Naruto is definitely a Jonin cell. The Namikaze family, as well as Hiruzen and Kobarama, are celebrating. Kobarama doesn't quite understand what, what that's supposed to mean, but he's happy for his child anyways. Ataru is also proud of Naruto, as he did in some way kind of raise him and look out for Naruto, even though nobody really noticed. Kobarama had to explain his story to Menma, Mito, and Kushina again, and he is kind of getting tired of it since it's a lot to explain, especially for humans who, doesn't even, who don't even know that other species in the universe exist other than humans. And once everybody got around the fact that Naruto is an alien and he's kind of a prince as well, which isn't easy, I mean, I don't blame them. Kobarama then asked if a certain friend of his can join the party, and Minato reluctantly agreed, but was a little suspicious since he knows Kobarama's from space, so why would there be one of his friends here? But then Kobarama just goes over to Naruto, puts his hand onto his head, and then a wolf seems to jump out of his back. Sorry, of, of his front. Like his... No, you know what? So a wolf jumps out from his back. But it's not a normal wolf. It has black skin similar to a panther with 13 tails and fluffy fur. Guys, this is my tailed beast. His name is Ataru, the thirteen-tailed wolf. Naruto, yo, Naruto presents proudly. A tailed beast? But he looks so cute, Mito says. Cute, huh? Well, I can be not cute. Ataru snapped back. He didn't like being called cute. It was kind of an insult to him, but everyone just laughed. So guys, if you're wondering why the Kanoa crush didn't happen with Orishimaru's invasion, well, as I said, due to the five Kage and all the nations, at least some of the representatives, being present during the exams, there was much more security in the Hindley village, with Chunin and Jonin from every village supporting them. And so, they couldn't f- Urchimaru's army, as I'll call it, wouldn't be able to fight off, well, five Kage plus a lot of Chunin and Jonin along with them. As well as a lot of Anbu present. Then skip forward about half a year. Naruto is now an official Anbu, so everyone basically knows that he's in the Anbu, as well as everyone knows that he's a Jonin, because, well, the five Kage themselves decided it. Naruto is kind of like a hero figure to the Hidden Leaf Village, and is known throughout all lands. Because he is a force to be reckoned with. Like, he is high Kage level. And he's also gotten into a relationship with Mito, which at first Minato was a little bit, well, not, not, not happy, but he was very surprised as he thought that Mito and Naruto were kind of like siblings and not, well, boyfriend and girlfriend. But anyways, he got over it. Kushina was happy as she liked Naruto 
and if they married, Naruto could be an official Namikaze, or Uzumaki. Naruto also got a lot of training done with his real father, Kobarama, as well as the Tailed Beast. Naruto also talked to Kurama through the link that um, people have with Chakra. So he basically went into Mito's mindscape with Kobarama's help, as he was kind of an expert in, well, Chakra control and mind techniques. He was a Jinchuriki for, as I said, millennia. So he he knows the ins and outs of every tailed beast, even the ones living on Earth. Then, on one faithful day, Kobarama knocks on the Namikaze house's door. As he, he got his own apartment now. He knocks on the door, Naruto opens and sees his father. He's happy, invites him in, and they eat breakfast together. But then Kobarama has something important to say. A serious topic. I want to take Naruto with me on a journey. I don't know how long it will be, but it's definitely going to be one or two years. What? Why that? Naruto still has a lot to learn about me, his heritage, and his tailed beast, and he needs to get stronger, because there might be some of our clan members or astrals that might come here to wage war against the humans. And Naruto needs to get stronger to fight them off in case I cannot. They all agree, and Naruto is a little bit sad to leave Mito behind as well as his family, but he knows he's in good hands. And so, with la one last found kiss from his parents, well, Krishina and Minato, as well as Mito and a hug from Enma, he leaves off for one and a half years. We cut to present time almost two years after Naruto left with his dad. I won't explain much about his training time skip right now, however, it'll be revealed bit by bit. But I will say that Naruto got a summoning now. He didn't just get any summoning, he actually got two summonings. One is his birthright as an astral prince, and that is a dragon, or dragons rather. Traditionally, every astral royal has a dragon as his summoning, but also because Naruto is a Jinchuriki, he also has a wolf summoning that is special only to the to Ataru's Jinchuriki. That can be used for tracking, healing, but also to distribute information to allies and people in different villages. He obviously likes the dragons more, but I mean, it's always good to have healing and messengers. Because, I mean, who, who wouldn't like a dragon as a summoning? We then cut to the gate of the Hidden Leaf Village, where two Jonin are on guard duty as usual, but then they see two figures emerging from the shadow at an extreme pace. They were using the teleportation technique. Wait, is that you, Naruto? One of the guards screamed in joy. It's me, alright, Naruto responded. Can I see the fourth Hokage, please? Of course, you're always welcome here. Thank you. And with that, Naruto and Kabarama disappeared just as fast as they arrived. Naruto teleported to the Hokage's office alone and left Kabarama to walk around the village and check on his apartment. When Naruto teleports into the Hokage's office, he sees Minato, but he also sees a red-haired girl with three genin behind her, and Naruto recognizes one of the genin as Konohamaru. Yes, Konohamaru is already a genin, 
he'll just be a little older in this what if than usual. Yup. Hi, Minato, Naruto says. Who do you think you are, kid? Mita screams out. It's me, don't you remember me? N -n -n Naruto? Minato cries out. There's no way that kid can be Naruto, Minato's. Mito yeah, says. It's me, Naruto says. Prove it. And all Naruto does is go over to Mito and hug her. I've missed you so much, Mito says. Me too, Naruto responds. I'll take you out on a date today, alright? Naruto says, with his romantic look. Alright, sorry if it's cheesy, just, just don't mind it. Wait, is that you, big bro Naruto? Konohamaru says. Oh, Konohamaru, you're a genin now. Congratulations. Yeah. Wait. Are you Mito Sensei's boyfriend? Yes, why are you asking? Wait, Mito, you're a sensei? A Jonin sensei? Yep. Mito became a Jonin over the two years, and Menma is now in the Anbu, but before that, he did also receive the rank of Jonin. So he's a former Jonin, but now in the Anbu. Of course, as Naruto was under the direct control of the Hokage. Because, if you forgot, Hiruzen is a prison. Mito's team, which I'll just call Team 7, because why not? So Team 7, then the new Team 7 just got back from a D-rank mission, which was getting back some milk. And they've been doing D-rank missions for a while now, and... Just like Naruto, Konohamaru is asking for harder missions. For, for a harder mission. Because, well, he is a little bit stronger. Because he saw how much Naruto trained with Hiruzen. And so Konohamaru wanted to keep up and also get as strong as Naruto. So he does have some skills like better chakra control and even some jutsu. No, nothing crazy like the summoning jutsu or Rasengan, but he is stronger. When did you come back, Naruto? Minato asked. Oh, I just got back. As soon as I arrived, I teleported here. Teleported, huh? Just like you used to. Well, what else should I do? You think I'd walk over here like a normal person? That takes way too long. Stop bragging, M M Mito says. All right, fine. I'll walk next time. No, it's all right, Mito says. Anyways, Mito, do you have some free time right now? Naruto asks. Well, yeah, I just finished a mission with my Genin team. I have some free time. All right. They go on their little date, and they're walking around town, of course, after eating ramen at Ichirakus, of course. And then they pass by the Uchiha, um, the Uchiha compound. There they see Itachi, Shisui, Sasuke, and another black haired girl there and they're all just talking and then Itachi sees sees that Naruto's back. They greet him and turns out 
The black-haired girl? Is he not a- Yes. Soft game, he not a- Deal with it. Um. Cause, I mean, let's be honest. Who likes Sakura? But don't tell her. Anyways. So. Naruto's welcomed. By the Uchiha's. And then, Mito and Naruto decide that they're gonna go to the Namikaze house because Kushina, kind of like Naruto's f mother, um, hasn't seen Naruto since he's arrived back at the village, and maybe Menma will be there. So they go there. Menma sadly isn't here, but Kushina definitely is. Kushina starts crying when she sees Naruto and barely recognizes him. And if you're wondering why nobody can recognize him, um, well, of course, except for Itachi, because Itachi is the goat. But nobody else can recognize him because his appearance has, of course, changed. I mean, not only was it ten t two years ago since they'd seen him before. But also, his he's wearing different clothes now, and his skin has gotten a little paler, and he wears not really a robe, but he kind of wears like a hoodie, sorry, like kind of a jacket with... Uh, signs similar to Tomoe on it. He basically looks like if Hagur what Hagoroma would look like if he went through a bad phase in his uh, teenage years. <laughs> but anyways, then of course they get the notice that Gara, the one-tailed Shuriki, and the. Mm, not the new not Kazekage, because in this timeline, the old one, the fourth Kazekage, Kaze Kaze, which somehow is Gara's dad, apparently, um, is still alive, so Gara didn't become Kazekage. But he's in danger, and he got kidnapped by two Akatsuki members. So... Minato himself orders Naruto, Menma, and Mito, along with Kakashi, the old Team 7, to go over there and rescue Gara. Now, why? Because, well, I mean, Naruto is a former Anbu member and a Jonin, Mito is a Jonin, Menma is a Jonin, sorry, and an Anbu. And Kakashi's a Jonin and a former Anbu. So they're all pretty strong. Well, very strong. And, yeah. And by rescuing the Kazekage's kid, they can again help the relations between the sand and the leaf. The old Team 7 prepares, and Konohamaru, of course, wants to go with them, but he's not allowed to. Because, I mean, what would he do? So, anyways, they start their mission, and they go to the hidden sand village. They see Kankuro, who apparently has venom in his body. And so, they look for a healer, but Mito isn't a healer. And so they think that they can't do anything to help him, but then... Naruto puts his thumb onto his teeth and a little droplet of blood comes from his finger and Kakashi asks what he's doing but then Naruto yells out summoning jutsu and he summons a wolf a wolf mother to be precise and she 
she takes out the venom in Conqueror's body and heals him almost completely. So, Conqueror is basically back on his feet in no time. They then start their journey with knowledge that at least one of that one of the Akatsuki members is Sorcery of the Sand, Puppeteer. This is because uh, Grandma Shio told them, and again, she's going with them this time, as in the original. They go and they encounter the Akatsukis, but not before they have to break through the seal. But this time, Naruto does it very easily with his clones using his teleportation technique, so they can all open the seal at the same time. They go in there, and Menma immediately tries to attack Daedara, but Naruto stops him because he sees that Daedara has mines all over the cave, and if they do as much as take a step, the whole my the whole cave will blow up. But of course, Daedara and Sorcery wouldn't get hurt because they would just use one of Daedara's clay birds. And so, Naruto uses one of his jutsus. Now, he uses the fire style Fire Phoenix jutsu, which is a high level fire style jutsu. And then, whilst everyone is, well, focused on the jutsu, he again makes a shadow clone, which will be standing upside down on the ceiling of the cave, looking down on everybody, with Zetsu behind him, because, oh, Zetsu's also the goat. But Zetsu doesn't interfere since he doesn't really care at this point. Naruto badly injures Daedra before he can fly away, and Menma and Mito both go for Sasori. Kakashi's aiding Naruto, but he knows Naruto doesn't really need any help. But that's gonna be it for the entire series. I'm really sorry I didn't quite finish it up to canon, but this is where the series and the movie finishes. So I hope you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!